Hello everybody, welcome to Blue Marble Science. This is going to be a quick update on where we stand with the Cavendish experiment. In the previous video we went through some of the calculations that we've done to analyze the amount of force that's going to be applied to the torsion beam and to make an estimate of the size of the torsion wire that we can use and it all seems to be very reasonable. And I showed you a couple of drawings, one of the apparatus and one of the overall experiment. But one part of this didn't get talked about very much and it's this device up here at the top. Now that's a device that allowed Cavendish to rotate the torsion wire and center the torsion beam inside the enclosure. And it's very important to do that. The clearances inside are very very tight. Those small masses, if the beam is perfectly centered in the enclosure, can only move about three quarters of an inch before they contact the walls of the enclosure. So we have to have a way to make fine adjustments to the position of that beam and that's what that device did. We're not really sure exactly what Cavendish used. It appears he may have used a worm gear drive or something like that, but I decided to look at what some other people have done. And there is a company named Pasco that makes a commercial version of the Cavendish experiment and they use a device like this. It's just a large wheel and a small wheel with an O-ring connecting the two. So when you turn the small wheel, you move the large wheel very slightly. And this gives you the ability to make a fine adjustment to the position of the wire. Seemed like a good idea to me. You know, a guy once told me to never waste an opportunity to copy something that works. So keeping that in mind, I came up with a device that's very similar to what Pasco did. Here you see the thing mounted on the torsion beam enclosure. Now you may hear me call that enclosure the apparatus or whatever, but that's what I'm talking about. This sealed wooden enclosure that houses the torsion beam. That device looks like this. The torsion wire goes up in a hole in the end of this shaft and it's secured in place with a set screw. Now the shaft passes through a tube and that tube has got a bearing at the top and at the bottom. There's a mounting plate and that allows us to mount this assembly to the torsion beam enclosure. Up at the top we've got a 3 inch diameter wheel and a 1 quarter inch diameter shaft and those two are connected with an o-ring. So that's essentially all there is to the device. Here's a detail of all the parts it takes to make that thing. So this is what I've been doing for the past couple of weeks is working on this. It may not be obvious how important this thing is, but this is absolutely critical. We have to have a way to make this adjustment. If we don't, we're not going to have a successful experiment. Now one of the channel members contacted me some time back and offered his assistance and it turns out that he is an excellent machinist. He prefers to go by the name Two Left Thumbs, which is a curious name for a machinist, but we'll just call him Lefty. And my good friend Lefty has been busy working on the parts and pieces for this thing. Here are photographs of some of the stuff he's been doing in the last couple of days. So I owe a huge thanks to Two Thumbs Left for his assistance and his consultation in refining this design. But that brings us to one other thing, and that's a shout out to all the people who have been contributing to this effort. Here's a list of the folks who have made monetary donations, and I can't begin to tell you how much I appreciate it. Without you guys, this thing will not happen. And again, a huge shout out to Two Thumbs Left for all his assistance, consultation, and hard work on the torsion wire adjuster. So what comes next? Well over the next couple of days my plan is to get down to the lumber yard and acquire the hardwood we need for the apparatus itself. I need to get it here in the shop and let it stabilize for a week or so before I start actually doing any work on it. And in the meantime what I'm going to be doing is working out the details of the actual joinery required for that enclosure. Some of it's pretty straightforward. Uh, some of it's going to be fairly unique. So it's going to be interesting to see how that works out. I'll be videotaping a lot of that woodworking activity, and I hope you guys will enjoy watching some of that. 
So that's the plan for the next couple of weeks, and I'll be getting back with you with periodic updates. In the meantime, hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons. And with that, we'll catch you guys on the next one.